What's happening, everybody? This is Adi again, Gate 7 International, back at it with another deep dive from the lovely island of Galinos. The signings keep coming, and I'm just going to keep doing these deep dives. Doesn't matter where I am, they're just going to keep happening. And it's a very exciting one. I was up all night doing the research for this. This is for Pep BL. Very exciting player. A signing that changes the game completely for this club this season. We're going to get into it, but before we continue, guys, if you haven't done so already, don't forget to like and subscribe. We hit 2K recently. Next step is 3K. 3K subscribers on YouTube. We're going for 4K on Instagram as well. Growing this community step-by-step, day-by-day, and we need your help for that. Help us continue to grow this community and become the largest voice of the fans for Libyakos. And for those of you that are betting, guys, if you haven't done so already, check out betus.com.pa. Use our promo code GATE7INTL to get a 125% deposit boost. Again, that's GATE7INTL for a 125% deposit boost. BetUS.com accepts crypto as well. So if you dabble in crypto, you don't want to transfer money from your bank, you can do that as well. They accept all those forms of payment. Now, without further ado, everybody, we're going to get right to it. We're going to get to what you guys have been waiting for, what I spent all night doing research and watching film for, the newest signing for Lubiakos, Pep Biel, 25-year-old left foot attacking mid. Now, he is primarily an attacking mid. He is primarily a number 10. I got a lot of questions yesterday. Is he a, is he a forward? Is he a winger? How are we going to use him? And I'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, the, the profile, he's a he's a shorter guy uh, along the lines of Guterres and De La Fuente. De La Fuente is actually a little, just a little bit taller. This guy's sitting at 167 centimeters, 5 foot 6 inches, um, 141 pounds, 64 kilos. So not the not a big guy, but it, it's it doesn't matter. Height height matters nothing. This guy's got a lot of skill. As I mentioned, he's an attacking mid, but he was used as a wide midfielder, uh, primarily right sided midfielder. In addition to left here and there, um, played at the number ten, plays as center forward. I mean, he's play he could play almost anywhere. It seems like. And he can do so quite effectively. Um, he also played in a bunch of different formations. Copenhagen used, I would say it was mainly the 4-3-3, but they also played a lot in the 4-4-2. They played in a 4-5-1, a 4-2-3-1 as well, something that we're very used to seeing. The, his profile is just incredible, guys. Uh, mix of technique, flair, agility. Things, all things that I never expected that we would be able to find in a player for Libyakos or that we could afford in a player. Um, the things that this guy does to defenders is just unbelievable. Anytime he has the ball, you guys, you'll see. He just, you feel like something can happen. I mean, it, it's it's like having another Podenza. I mean, he has it. He can just do something. Doesn't matter who's on him. Um Sometimes, once in a while, he I would see him for Copenhagen try to do maybe too much on his own. Uh, but it's not that this guy doesn't know his own limits. He knew he was the best guy on the field. And when you're the best player on the field, sometimes you just want to try things. You want to have fun. And <laughs> I don't think it was a guy that was just not smart, doesn't have the football IQ. This guy has football IQ. He just knows he's the best guy on the pitch. Um, and he's he's not just reliant on trickery. He's he's quick. Uh, he's got change of pace. He's also pretty physical for his size. Um, the feet are are they're they're quick moving. Gra- center of gravity is pretty low. I, I don't think that his feet move as quickly as Conrad de la Fuente, but they're just always on the ball, and it's so tricky for defenders to try and get the ball away from him. And he'll, while changing directions, or sometimes while he's just in the middle of of his stride, he'll change direction with the ball. I mean, that's incredible. I know it doesn't sound like much while I'm saying it, but guys, try while you're in the middle of a stride to change direction on the ball. It's very difficult, and he makes it look so easy. Uh, the the profile is incredible, and it since I've been doing these deep dives, I have not seen a profile like this. For a player coming to a Libyakos, this is something else, um, something else entirely. 
uh, I mean, he was voted player of the season. We've been told by some by some of the Danish fans uh, last season in the Danish league, and I understand why. Um, moving uh, moving into uh, some of the some of the data tables here, uh, we're going to start with as we always do. Uh, we're going to start with goal threat. Now, I have something special for you guys here. Um, you guys love when I do player comparisons to players that are here. And I'm gonna I'm doing something that I haven't really done yet, and it's a player comparison, not to a current player or the stats of a current player from this past season or even the last calendar year. I'm taking the stats from Gostas Gosta Fortunis and his best season at Olympiacos to compare this guy. So now before I, I get into the stats specifically, I'll go into what I saw in the film first before kind of looking into the stats and explaining some things to you guys. But regarding goal threat, uh, the guy is very efficient with his, his opportunities. Um, over half of his shots are on target, uh, which is quite incredible. Uh, and even the ones that aren't directly on frame, if they're not hitting the post, um, from the target area, it's just very, very close to it. He has a nice curl on his shots too, especially if they're coming from distance. Um, he scores from set pieces, so he takes set pieces. I even saw him score from a corner kick. It was incredible. Um, besides that, he also had a handful of these poachers goals when he was playing at the striker position where very scrappy. He was just kind of in the right place at the right time and gets his foot in the right spot. He moves around a lot, and we're seeing this since Corbett came. the signings that are coming in, we're seeing that they all have this thing in common where they have, there's a lot of movements, dynamic movements. Once the ball all the time, he's constantly moving and calling for the ball. Um, shot power also is, is very decent. Um, shot creation, assist creation, Generally, I saw it came in two parts. It was either from set pieces, like corner kicks, um, or or it was coming from counters in odd man situations. Uh, and it, a, a counter, or we'll say an odd man situation that was caused by his skill. Um, and what he'll do is, in you know, he'll generally in those odd man situations, he'll draw the defender towards him and lay the ball off to whoever the goal scorer is or whoever's going to get the shot. Um, once in a while, I saw him play a ball deep into the final third or deep into the penalty area. It wasn't that often, but I mean, he's, he's got the skill to do that. Um, but he generally seemed to want to keep the ball on the ground, uh, or take the ball himself. That would seem to be his preference. And he was great last season, uh, in all competitions, 18 goals, 15 assists, and this year's form before coming to Olympiacos, he was already off with a bang. I mean, in seven games in the Danish league, he already had nine goal contributions. Just to keep that in mind. So as it stands in the Danish league, he's currently not only the leading goal scorer, but the leading assister as well. So uh, it's last season was not even, probably not even just his best season. It's just another season. If you look at what was going on with this season. Now let's look at the stats compared to Costa. You guys remember that that first season with Pedro Martins, Costa Fortunis was magical. I mean, he was doing a lot of great stuff. Maybe not in Europe per se, but in Greece, I mean, he was just nonstop. And look at the data here. It's 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 quite good. Costa's best season and this guy's stats are pretty close. Uh more goals pretty close to the same non-penalty XG shots, shot volume, right about the same assists, cross the edges them out. Uh, it's, it's pretty good. And I don't know how much you guys remember from 18, 19 season, but we, we talked about how amazing Costas Fortunis was. And that was before, of course, he had that terrible, the terrible ACL injury uh, leading up to the following season. But I mean, this stuff here is, is is incredible from from Pep Biel. The fact that he the fact that he holds a candle to this Costas Fortunis, this is great because this isn't going to stop from him. This guy's quality, and he has as, he has attributes that Costa didn't have, and that he moves around a lot. Costa at his best was never the type that moved around all the time. That was one of the complaints about him was his work rate on the field. So very exciting stuff from a from a goal creation aspect from Pep Biel. 
Uh, now, up next here, we have uh, build up possession. And when regarding build up possession or how he does in, in these aspects of the game, the, his, the volume, his ball volume, we'll say, his volume of passes and touches is entirely dependent on where he's playing. As I mentioned to you guys, he played kind of all over the place with Copenhagen as a wing, a deeper center mid, right-sided mid, attacking mid, forward. His ball volume is completely dependent on where he's playing. So if he's playing in the midfield, we see his touch volume is much higher um, than if he's on the wing or the striker. And of course, if he's on the wing, the volume is usually higher than on the striker because he gets the ball deeper as well. Uh, in in open play, he will usually, especially going into the final third, he will be usually the target guy, uh, especially if he's the center forward. He's the target guy, not the one doing build up. Otherwise, he's more than capable of assuming the role as that engine of possession. I mean, you'll see him moving in and out, uh, interplay, connecting with different different players on his team. Um very visible one touch as well, which we like to see, especially in this system. Um, we've seen more one touch already with Corbin on system than we did all last season with Pedro Martins. So you want a guy that's going to be able to do that. And he, he can do that. He can do that in spades. Um, most importantly, as I mentioned a little bit earlier was that off the ball movement, dynamic movement. This guy is constantly, he wants the ball and he wants, he wants to be in stride. He wants to get in dangerous areas. Super important for Corbin on. And this guy does a lot of that. Um, you, you can say it's because he's moving all the time that he finds himself in so many situations uh, because because of that movement. Uh, also, his ability in build-up will draw multiple defenders to him, and it inevitably leaves a runner or a teammate open, uh, whether it's for a dangerous opportunity or in a, a open and in an advanced position. Um, and it... If he's not holding the ball continuously, it's uh, by that I mean like holding it, trying to dribble on a defender. Usually there's opportunities that occur just from the guy that's open. Um, I'm curious to see how how it's going to start in Greece, if there's going to be like a transition period or not, because clearly his his level in Greece is going to be – he's going to be – he's beyond the level of Greece. So I imagine we'll see him maybe after a couple of games start to take some liberties. Um Maybe because it's a new environment, he'll play a little bit more conservatively. That's what you would expect from a player. But when he starts getting the ball rolling in Greece, I think hes you'll see him try to dribble a lot more. He has technique to switch the field uh, or just you know put the ball in the air. But I mentioned before, uh, and he has the accuracy to do it. I, I didn't really see him put a ball wrong with some of these longer balls. But you're going to see most of his ball movement and build up stay on the ground. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, if he's playing on the wing, he'll stretch the width, take the defenders with him, uh, and he can just make situations from nothing, just like Podense did. Uh, if he's playing as a striker, he'll hold the ball up well, he'll come deep to receive, and and even interplay to help get the ball forward, but he wants to be the point the point guy. When he's in midfield, he'll, he'll link with, well with his partners to get the ball going forward, and Again, drawing these defenders to him, just seeing some of the stuff he can do to defenders, some of these touches. Look at the highlight videos, guys. They're not, they're not just highlights. It's not just one time he does this. There's so much to pick from with some of these great moves that this guy makes. Um, now, comparing this to Costas Fortunis, I, I brought up that his touch volume is dependent on where he's playing. So some of you might be looking and see, oh, well, Costa was way more involved in play than this guy was. This guy played as a center forward a lot. And when he's playing as a center forward, he's getting 15, 20 touches, maybe. But when he's playing in the midfield, it's closer to 40 touches, sometimes more than 40 touches. A lot closer, a lot closer to Costa here. Pass accuracy is about the same in the 80s, considering how many risks he takes. And this is really important. This is what I want to focus you guys on, because Costa took a lot of risks too. Downfield, playing the ball, and high eight beyond the 80 percentile in pass accuracy we like to see that especially from risk takers look at their progressive actions progressive carries okay uh go stuff you remember that 18 19 season that 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 formation was built to play through him that's why costa's volume was high everything went through him so you would expect that his progressive passes his progressive carries would be higher because the formation everything went through him that's why when he had a bad game, it looked like we weren't playing so well. It, with Pep, sure, he was the he was the best player maybe in, 
in the Danish league, according to some of the people that we interacted with on social media. But the system did not go through him. The system maybe made him a point man, but he was a part of the system. And look at look at his numbers. Fantastic stuff. Volume of dribbles is, these are successful dribbles, by the way. Um, touches in penalty area. Um, and in that season for Costa, it was his best season. So much volume. The system was for him. So this is this is very respectable in many, many aspects, especially considering how many different positions this guy played and how many different roles that he had to assume. Costa only played one role, one position. Number 10, attacking mid. That was it. So this is remarkable. If if we're getting if we're getting from this guy at a in a decent season, we'll say statistics that are close to the best of Costa's Fortunis, then this is going to be one of the best signings that Olympiacos has ever made. Period. Now that is summing up the build up and possession. But what I'm going to show you next, and I know some of these offensive players, we don't really um, we don't really spend too much time on the defensive traits. But these defensive traits are very important uh, in regarding the comparison, at least, of Costa's Fortunis. And that's for a couple of reasons. Costa was never, unfortunately, lauded for a lot of his defensive prowess. It's actually one of the things that probably, that well, probably, that we had heard was annoying to coaching staff. Pedro Martins was his lack of ability to track back. He did do it once in a while, but there were other players that did it better. Um, but Pep Biel's defensive attributes are surprisingly solid. Uh, he's not averse to the press, of course, certainly not beyond tracking back and closing players down. And with his stature, he's actually won, his, you know, his shorter stature, he's won a lot more aerial duels than I would expect. Uh, positions himself very well in these types of situations and, and is, is quite successful. And this is, this is something that we never had with Gustav. So imagine having a guy that has the creativity of Costas Fortunis, but he's also a dog defensively. Look at the volume, tackles, volume of tackles, volume of interceptions, uh, clearances and blocks. Okay, maybe we're not so we're not so worried about, but I mean aerial duels. Costa was taller than him and didn't win anything in the air, or very much, I should say. I mean, this guy's this guy's defensive work rate, whether it's on the press, tackling. I mean, it's 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 wonderful. So I want you to imagine again, you have a guy like Gosas Fortunis creatively, offensively, that also has a defensive work rate. Maybe not similar to a guy like Yermi. Maybe not similar to a guy like Madi at his best, but pretty freaking good. This is. I'm so excited. I don't know if you can, if you guys can tell, but I, this was one of the easiest deep dives that that I could do. I, I didn't want to stop. I was up till 3 a.m. doing doing this emergency deep dive, as I'll call it, because I was so excited for this player. So there you have the statistics. There you have a great look at Costas Fortunis. I thought the comparison to Costa was huge because one of the at his best 18 19 season he was one of the best players that we've seen in a long time so getting a guy that compares to that to me was huge so bringing it back what's my verdict well the reported figure we heard was six million euros six million it's a lot of money for us 10 i think it's 10 million kroner 10 million danish kroner if i'm not mistaken i could be wrong with the with the conversion for the currency Six million euros. It's a lot of money. So big risk. What makes it even a bigger risk is that we need a couple of huge impact players so that we can do something in Europa League. And not just him. We also have rumors about a couple of uh, of other players, huge huge names that could be coming in too, that Corbadon can use for Europa League and, of course, for Greece as well. So what's my verdict? Is it is this a huge risk for the money that we're paying? Yeah, of course. For what we need him to do? Yeah, of course. But seeing what I saw in the tape, 
the profile, what this guy can do. I, I don't see this as a risk. I think this is a great signing for six million. This is, you know, forget, forget, forget Henry Onyakuru five million. Forget Abu Bakar Kamara five and a half million. You know, those were players where I sat there. I was like, why are we spending this money? You know, even at their best, I don't think they can offer what we need. This is what we should be getting for five, six million. This type of player. I'm going to make a similar statement, uh, like like I did about Wong and Baum. This guy, maybe there'll be a game or two transition period. I don't think it's going to be a long transition like I thought there would be for Conrad De La Fuente. I think this guy's going to come in, and I think this guy's going to have some immediate impact, just like Wong and Baum. And I'm going to go even further. I'm going to make an even bolder statement. I think that this guy is going to be one of the best this one of the best signings we've had in the Marinakis era. I he has that ability. I think we're in for a real treat here. Barring injury or something crazy, this this is a match made in heaven. So I hope you guys enjoyed that deep dive. Like I said, I stayed up all night. Again, as always, just like with the, the Weijo Huang deep dive, I apologize for the background noise here. I'm still in Galino. I've got plenty of sound effects between somebody working on his roof, between the, the rooster that wouldn't let up. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope I gave you enough information to answer your questions about this guy. Um, like I said, a lot of you were asking me, where are we going to use him? Actually, I don't think I answered that question. If it were me, a player like this caliber, you don't play him out of position. This guy is a 10. Play him at the 10. Just because he can play the center forward, just because he can play the wing, you can use that rotation. Maybe if you want to fit in other pieces, but this guy is amazing at the 10 position. Let's use him where he's his best. And we can fill the rest in. Just imagine, guys, what our, our midfield three is going to be. Yan and Villa, Wong and Baum, and Pep. Oh my gosh. There's no reason why we shouldn't make a huge push in Europa League with this guy. I'm excited, and all of you should be too. I hope you can hear that in my voice. I'm super excited about this signing, and I hope I get to do more deep dives like this. And don't forget, everyone, if you haven't done so already, hit that like and subscribe button for more deep dives which are coming. The club is going to be signing at least a couple more players before the deadline is up. And I'll get those out to you as soon as possible, just like this. And until next time, everybody, this is Gate 7 International by the fans, for the fans. 3K YouTube subscribers up next, along with 4K on Instagram. And until next time, we'll see you. Gatiba, you go! Oh, Pupa!